Inside this video right here, we're gonna talk about shock and everything you need to know about shock for school. Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, it's the Paramedic Coach. If you're new here, be sure to like and subscribe down below and welcome to everything EMS education in one place here on YouTube. Now, what I wanna talk about here is types of shock that we are gonna see out in the field. The first thing and my goal in this video is you need to understand the different types of shock and why they happen. So let's talk about a few of the most common types of shock that I've seen the field and that will be on your exams and tests. Now, the first type of shock that we're gonna talk about is cardiogenic shock. So what is cardiogenic shock? Now, cardio is the heart. So it's gotta do with the heart failing as a pump, okay? So when the heart fails the pump, there's many reasons why the heart could fail as a pump. Well, a tension pneumothorax that is pressing air against the heart, that will cause the heart to not be able to move, that can be a cardiogenic problem. What about congestive heart failure? It's failing as a pump. That could be a reason as well. What about pericarditis? It can cause pressure, a tamponade. That can cause pressure so it can't be as effective as well. What about an MI, a myocardial infarction, myo, muscle, cardio, to do with the heart, infarction, death, okay? Now, cardiogenic shock Remember, all types of shock have to do with hypoperfusion. What that means, you are not getting enough blood oxygen to your organs. The question is, who's the culprit of the shock? And that's what we're going over here. So that's cardiogenic. The next one we're gonna talk about is, in this video is septic shock. Now, we talk about septic shock, the patient will start off with an infection in their body. That's step one, okay? Then what's gonna happen is, there at some point that infection ends up in the bloodstream. When that infection ends up in the bloodstream, we call it sepsis. As the patient goes on and on, they go from sepsis to severe sepsis to septic shock where they're gonna be hypotensive and vasodilated. Now, hear me on this one. When you hear the word sepsis, I want you to think of one thing, bacteria in the blood. There's bacteria in your blood. There's an infection in your blood. It got through. Two main places it goes through. There's many places. Okay, it can. But my two of them, the two most common ones that I see is pneumonia and UTI. Pneumonia and UTI, and always be worried about this in elderly patients, okay? Or patients with respiratory issues, okay? Let's move on to the next one. The next one's gonna be hypovolemia, hypovolemic shock. So what that is, okay, hypo, not enough, volemia is volume. So what that is, is not enough volume, not enough blood, fluid in our body, okay? So think about it. if I get shot by a weapon or I get stabbed, I'm losing blood. If I have a, or a big GI bleed as well, okay, that can cause hypovolemia. So any amount of large blood loss, hypovolemic shock, again, hypoperfusion, I'm losing blood, okay? Now the last type of shock that I wanna talk about is anaphylactic shock. Now what is this type of shock? Well, think about it. It's kinda of like sepsis and here's how you remember it. Sepsis gets worse and worse and worse. Anaphylaxis gets worse and worse and worse until we have that real bad vasodilation and hypotension. When anaphylaxis is caused by an allergic response to do with histamines inside the body, okay? So think about your bee sting, right? Your insect bite, those types of things, uh, food allergies. But those are the things that will cause anaphylactic shock. Allergic reaction is only one body system. Anaphylaxis is two body systems. As it gets worse and worse, we head towards shock. We have to treat anaphylaxis aggressively or it will go into shock. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about as a quick tip is what is this whole compensation, uncompensated, what is all this crazy stuff with shock? Let me explain this simply to you so you got it cold. The way I think about it is when we lose blood, okay? It's just the easiest way to remember. If I lose blood and I'm in hypovolemic shock, what's the first thing the body's gonna do? It's gonna increase the heart rate. 
it's got less blood, it's like, well, maybe I'll increase the heart rate, I'll have a chance to survive. That's the first thing it does. Now, when things get bad and you run out of fluid, you're gonna get hypotensive, okay? And when things get really, really bad, there's not enough blood to pump anymore, then you're, at that point, it's coma at that point. You're gonna go into a coma, okay? And you, then you're gonna be heading towards death, all right? So think about that if someone's bleeding out the cycles. First, we get tachycardia. If we keep losing, keep losing the hypotension since then. We keep losing, we keep losing, we're gonna go unresponsive, okay? So that's the way you can remember the cycle of shock, okay? But the first thing to remember is that that compensation is that tachycardia goes mild and gets worse, okay? Remember that first and you'll start the pathway right. Now, if you're currently an EMT or a paramedic student, down in the description below is our paramedic coach course and our NREMT prep accelerator program. Now, what this is is a collection of over 160 videos plus a private community as well. Click the link down below to check out all the research and student results with our program. It's a one-time access with no monthly payments. So click the link down below to get access to that. And everyone, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.